check one, two. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. Today, we have a very fascinating video where I'm going to be breaking down some stuff that so many people truly don't understand. This is literally one of the most secretive, hidden, under the surface subjects that someone could go into. And I'm going to be breaking this down in a very understandable, yet detailed and nuanced way. I promise you are most likely not going to hear about this literally anywhere else. All right. I'm going to be breaking down the real occult, demonic, we could even go as far as saying satanic, ritualistic agendas that are then manifesting into our mass collective consciousness, specifically through the entertainment industry and a lot of other avenues as well. I'm going to be breaking this down from the lens. This is what makes this unique. I'm breaking this down from the lens of being being an actual practitioner of the dark arts myself. So as someone who works very deeply with a lot of these demonic energies that exist in our local solar system and galaxy, I'm going to be sharing and shedding some Luciferian light on a lot of the darkness that is manifesting in our today's time so that you can actually have the understanding of what is true knowledge of good and evil. This is opening up that doorway for all of you as the listeners to have an education that most people are not going to have. Okay, so once again, in this today's video, this is what I'm going to be breaking down. Some of these demonic, ritualistic, satanic agendas that a lot of the times are manifesting themselves through the entertainment industry. Why is this happening? Why are these people doing this? What is the perspective and what is the consciousness that these people are in and where they're coming from? And ultimately, what is the mass collective reason why these things are manifesting at a much larger, uh, much larger level? So why is this happening? If we live on a planet that is governed by the source, which all things are, then why is this taking place? Why does this happen? What is the bigger picture, the bigger source perspective of all of these things? Okay, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a screen share just to show you exactly what it is that I'm talking about in regards to some of these ritualistic programmings that are put into the entertainment industry. And I'm going to be explaining what these things do. Most of you are very unconscious to this stuff. So I'm going to make you consciously aware of what some of these things are and how they have an effect on you. Okay. If you're interested in learning a lot more about this specific subject, then I highly recommend that you stay tuned and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so welcome in. So first, let me start by giving a little bit of an introduction on who I am, just so that you can know who you're getting this information from, because I think that's absolutely going to be something that is worth knowing. All right, just to give a little bit of a context. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the Teradek. I'm studied when it comes to planetary energies 
in association with astrology. And I'm also studied when it comes to trauma and trauma's relationship to the nervous system. All right. So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and move right on into this subject at hand. All right. So the first thing that I really want to go into first is just giving a little bit of an of a understanding on how these demonic energies manifest themselves in our today's time. Okay, once again, I'm a real practitioner who has gone through some of the deepest forms of occult initiation with the darker aspects of Kabbalah. I directly communicate with telepathically these extraterrestrial energies that most people call demons. So I am sharing this from a perspective of understanding and real life experience. All right. So what are some of the ways that these energies move themselves in our today's time? Some of the most primary and significant ways that these forces come through is through the entertainment industry, whether that be through music, through movies, TV shows, um, you know, you name it. Anything that is going to be tied to the entertainment industry is going to be a major pump to get a lot of these demonic, darker, energetic influences into the mass collective consciousness. All right. So with that being said, the first thing that I want to do is I want to give you the understanding that this is not bad. Okay, so the first thing that I want to eliminate is I want to eliminate a dualistic perspective on all of this. So many people like to listen to this type of content. They like to fight. They like to work against. They like to say, we're fighting for good. We're standing against good. This is not that. What I'm sharing with you is simply what it is. And these things that are happening are happening for a reason. And fighting against it is not going to change it. Fighting against it is not going to do anything valuable. Rather, understanding what it is and then internalizing and allowing yourself to go through the integrative process that you need to go through, that's going to be the key in order to resolve these things internally within yourself. So in other words, there is no satanic, demonic energy that is getting pumped into the collective that can harm you or hurt you if you are allowing yourself to realize these are actually energies that are important within the collective consciousness and they give us room to better go into our unconscious and go into repressed parts of ourself. So this is going to be stuff that is connected to trauma. All right? That's the first context that I want to create. So as this stuff is being pushed into the collective consciousness. How is this manifesting? This stuff is manifesting in a very subtle way. It is showing up through symbolism and through ritual. Rituals utilize different types of energetic sciences like spirals, lots of spinning. They use numerology, certain types of numbers appear different types of colors as colors are represented by different meridian centers on the body as well as different celestial bodies like planets, things in that nature. They will use actual entities. Sometimes they will use the names of entities as actors within TV shows or within movies that literally uh, you know, appear within the show as that archetypal energy that can also channel that energy through. So this is just, okay, sound frequencies, like different instrumentals that they play in the background, et cetera. These are all different ways, and there are more ways in which these energies, a lot of the times these darker, demonic, more so negatively polarized energies are then going to work their way into the mass collective consciousness. Why is this happening? This is happening because people, regular people, everyday people, you and I, we listen to these things. We listen to the music. We watch the movies. We see the TV shows. We, you know, mindlessly scroll on social media and come across people that have, 
you know, connections to labels and deals that promote this type of energy, right? We consume products, whether it be foods or drinks, you know, underwear, shirts, et cetera. We wear products that have this same energetic uh, influence embedded within the company or within the emblem, within the energy of the product. All right. So these things are coming through in these ways because we're consuming it, we're allowing it in. Now, is this once again a bad thing? So the first thing that you're probably going to do as you're hearing me speak about this is you're thinking this must be terrible or this must be a bad thing. Well, the first thing that I want you to understand is that it's not a bad thing. It's there for a reason. And what these darker, negatively polarized energies do as they're moving through the screen or as they're moving through into the collective consciousness, however that's happening, is they are actually opening up doors to go deeper into the unconscious and into the subconscious. So they're opening up a sensitivity to some of the more negative, repressed aspects of self. So in other words, these ritualistic things and programs that are happening, they actually can trigger things that were traumatic that you've experienced in your past because there is a trauma component. There's a negative charge component to different traumas that we go through. And the nature of how most people approach trauma is in avoidance. So they avoid the repressed negative energy. They avoid the uncomfortable memory. They avoid these wounded parts of themselves. So as we learn to have an acceptance to go into these negative energies, into these repressed parts, and see them as a part of the bigger picture or a part of the whole, just like the yin and the yang, then what we have is we have a mass collective consciousness, we have a society, and we have an entertainment industry that is consistently giving us a little bit of a streamline of a pump of this negative energy that allows us to actually develop an acceptance for it, an acceptance with it to integrate it in a healthy way. So it's actually valuable. And that's why it exists the way that it does. Now there are some nuances to this as well. So of course, we live in a collective consciousness at the moment where there is a, a matrix that governs this planet. And this matrix is largely ruled by the planetary energy of Saturn. If you understand astrology and you know Saturn, Saturn is going to have a lot of constricting components, pressure, uh, fear, uh, the father, right? They call it father time. Okay, there's a time component to Saturn. So Saturn's not evil. Saturn also represents crystallization. It represents discipline. It represents, you know, structure in order, right? So Saturn is just a planet that has a lot of these energetic correlations to it. And that planet plays a big role in regards to what overlays the matrix that we experience on our planet. And this is not bad. This is because this is what our planet needs in order to harbor the human species in a healthy way to give us room and opportunity to better know ourselves and to better develop. All right. So with that being said, all of this demonic symbolism and influence that gets pushed into the collective through the entertainment industry, these things are a part of this matrix system that we live in currently. This will eventually change as time goes on, but this is a part of the system currently as we're experiencing it. So what this means is that, once again, there is a, there is a role as to what it does for us as humans that are able to actually uh, see it for what it truly is and then allow ourselves to process what it naturally brings out of us. Okay, or we could say go into and have acceptance for what it draws us deeper into. Now, a part of this system that we live in, there is a component that is tricky. So 
there's a component that sort of in some regards misleads people. So for example, like within the entertainment industry, it's like they will use a lot of this ritualistic satanic symbolism in a way that also stimulates the subconscious mind to sort of not understand how to listen to your authentic self or not understand how to follow nature's ebbs and flows. So they actually will use it in a way that is manipulative and that is, we could say, sinister. This is why people feel evil. They feel the evil in our today's time because people are using these darker energies in ways to try to control and have power and to profit off of others. So when it comes to that, when it comes to these people, right, these are going to be certain types of families, you know, royal families, we could go as far as saying, this is going to be different hidden corporations, different sections of the government that are all kind of banning together, working together, that have this general idea, we could almost say like an agenda that they have for the collective consciousness. Now, these people that are operating in this way, these are damaged people, okay? They have wounded inner children and they are operating out of a space of seeing things as separate from themselves and feeling like they need to conquer and control everything around them. So what they're willing to do is they're willing to create systems, one of those systems being the entertainment industry that is designed to have sort of like an agenda behind it to manipulate consciousness to a degree where it's actually potentially harming other people because it's also hitting the subconscious of the person to mislead them from trusting themselves or knowing themselves. And they're willing to do this because they want to profit and they want to keep you in a space where you're more so easily controlled or easily manipulated. And that way they can stay in, they can stay in power. They can stay in um, a position of control. So this is real. This is happening. There are many occult orders, high degrees of Freemasonry, inner circles of the Knights Templar, Skull and Bones, OTO. There are many different types of occult orders that are also in on these agendas collectively. But the point is, even though these things are and they are happening, it's still not evil and it's still not a bad thing because the only thing that makes it bad is your unawareness on how to use the energy in an effective way so that you can simply integrate it and process it and turn it into your own power or turn it into your own potential, turn it into your own growth, okay? So one, evil doesn't exist. This, Even though this is happening, it is corrupt. It is operating out of the false self. It's still not evil. These are wounded people. These are people that have been through trauma, just like me and you, that decided to operate a different way in regards to their trauma response. So they decided to become extreme psychopaths, extreme sociopaths, extreme narcissists. So they are viewing the world from a lens of, I am not you, so I will try to dominate and control you in order to better survive myself. That's literally the, the root of where it's coming from. The people that operate in that way, they're just trying to survive better. Okay. So when you see it from that lens, you can just understand these are just other people that are wounded. And what you can also start to understand is, yes, this stuff is taking place, but just because there's um, you know, a corruption to it, and just because these people are operating from this false self, doesn't mean that you can't use the energy and use the symbolism and use the rituals to allow to surface still these deeper, more negative charged parts of self to then be able to work with those. So you can still use these things as a way to surface repressed emotions and repressed sensations and repressed memories to allow yourself to accept that and work with them and be with them. 
So in other words, the more we resist these types of people, these satanic people that have this mass collective agenda, the more we resist them, the more we're actually resisting aspects of ourself. Because in truth, we're all connected. We're all connected to the same source energy. So even though the people are operating out of the false self that are doing these, you know, satanic ritualistic agendas to try to control the collective, they're still connected to you and you're still connected to them. So everything they're doing is what they're also doing to themselves. Okay. So when we try to demonize these people and we try to push against them, we're actually doing that to aspects of ourselves, rather than accepting them for where they're at, letting them exist as they do, being able to work with these energies within ourselves that are being pumped into the collective consciousness by these groups of people, then we are literally turning it into our potential. We're turning it into our own value, into our own understanding, into an opportunity to heal at a deeper level. Because these negatively charged energies that are coming through these rituals, the source of these energies is way beyond these corrupt satanic people. The energies are way beyond that. These are extraterrestrial forces that play a very unique and specific role in the development of consciousness within the solar system. So us as human species, we're a valuable and an important group of beings. And there are angelic forces just as there are demonic forces, positively polarized and negatively polarized, different species of beings existing in our solar system now that are very interested in our healthy development as a collective consciousness. And demonic and angelic energies work cohesively together to make sure evolution is properly unfolding on the planet. So contrary to all the different movies that we've watched, like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, etc., where it's always good versus evil, it's always the hero versus the villain, that's a part of the agenda. That was always a part of the agenda to get you to think there is duality that is manifest in the higher states of consciousness. That is not really what is happening. At the higher densities of consciousness between angels and demons, they work together to make sure we can heal and we can grow as the human species in a healthy way. Why? Because our evolution as the humans on planet Earth reflects their evolution for whatever species they are with whatever planet they exist on or star they exist on. Because once again, these energies, these entities understand the cosmic laws of connectedness. We're all one. So if we're not doing good as a planet and as a species that affects every other being in the local solar system and in our galaxy. So the whole duality agenda of hero versus villain, you know, good guys versus bad guys, that was never real. It was never real. And clearly it runs deep in regards to the roots of planet Earth because, you know, we have all these wars that are taking place and we have, you know, people seeing themselves as separate from others, et cetera. We're good. We're bad. We're good, et cetera. We're good. They're bad. We're good. And it's just not what it is. All right. So once again, I say all of this so that as I'm breaking this down, you realize truly that none of this is evil and none of this is bad. This is just what is happening and we're all in a growth process together as everyone, every one of you listening and everyone here, and we're learning you know, what it means to have this deeper connectedness. And sometimes we need to fight against other people. Sometimes we need to have these crazy events happen to learn these lessons. But guess what? You as the listener, you get to resonate at what level you're at, which means you don't need to engage in those things if you're not at that resonance and you won't attract it either. All right. So when we work with these satanic, demonic, darker 
energies that are getting pumped into the collective consciousness, we can use it with wisdom and with understanding and acceptance to go deeper into our trauma healing. When we are resisting our trauma as well as our wounds, our repressed emotions, our uh, sensations in our body and certain memories from the past that were traumatic, when we resist that, we are not fully loving ourselves because we have these wounded parts of us that are still existing there that need our attention. So when we resist it and we run, run away from it, trying to escape what we're truly feeling there, we're resisting a part of ourself that needs love and attention. And that's going to create a cycle and a loop of negative projection. So everything that we're resisting that's buried in our nervous system is then going to be projecting itself into our everyday lives unconsciously most of the time. And we're not going to understand why this is happening. And then we're getting fueled by the collective consciousness with all this demonic symbolism and all these darker energies, which is only stimulating more the trauma, stimulating more the necessity to be with these negative repressed emotions. And if we continue to resist it and run away from it while getting all this energy in, that is what creates the rat race. That's what creates someone running on a hamster wheel that is not getting anywhere. And then they're getting exhausted, but they're not getting anywhere because they're not surrendering into what they need to go into. They're not feeling what they need to feel. They're not visiting what they need to visit internally. They're resisting it. They're fighting it. Their entire life gets created to not go into that stuff or to avoid that stuff. All right. But when you reverse that flow and you have the acceptance and now you're willing to work through it, now these energies, these darker energies start to support you because you're becoming one with your darkness. You're becoming one with your unconscious. You're starting to connect with the sources, the demonic energy sources, the extraterrestrial intelligences that are negatively polarized. You're starting to connect with them, and now they're giving you more understanding, more knowledge, more wisdom, more opportunity for experience because you're seeing the bigger picture. It was never about worshiping the false self and having to dominate and control other people. That's just a layer of this matrix that we live on in this planet. Do you want to be the person that does that? No, because they're going to pay the karmic price. And the energies that operate through these people are, are demonic energies. They are extraterrestrial, negatively polarized demonic energies that are manifesting through these humans where the humans are choosing to worship their false self. So the choice is within the human. And the demonic energy is manifesting the influence of this negative polarity through these humans that are unconscious of the bigger picture, but are operating, thinking that they're in control, thinking they know what they're doing, not knowing that they're going to be paying the karmic price for everything that they did and everything that they're doing to other people, that's their lesson. And they don't know that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. But what they're doing is worshiping the false self, pushing out this narrative, pushing out this collective agenda that creates the perfect parameters for all of us as humans to get the, the resistance that we need the tension that we need, the pressure that we need, the catalyst that we need to better know ourselves. And we get to work with that catalyst. We get to reflect with that catalyst. We get to accept that catalyst as a part of life. We don't have to fight against it. We don't have to run away from it. We can accept it and then integrate it as it comes in and then turn that catalyst into a fuel, turn that catalyst into a source of power. 
that's the goal. And we all have the opportunity and we all have the potential to do this. So this is why this stuff is not evil. And the energies that are behind the people doing these things that are operating in their false self, the energies know what I'm sharing with you. That's why I'm communicating this message. This is a higher density understanding and education that I am relaying to all of you that are here now. And I work directly with these energies. And I'm working with them in a more integrated, authentic way. And that's why there's so much value that I get from working with these energies because I'm actually communicating and I'm bringing forth an energetic current that most people have absolutely no idea about, something that is so important in our today's time. Okay? So with that being said, Everything is playing its role in our today's time right now. It's all playing its role. And we are in the process of moving from a third density planet into a fourth density planet, which means this agenda that has been running for a very long time within our collective consciousness, it's starting to change drastically. And you could see a lot of these changes unfold when the pandemic manifested. This is a manifestation of the energetic um, structure of Earth itself starting to drastically shift itself. There was a purging that happened. And there's going to be more of these experiences. And the ways that things have been ran and have been done are going to start changing because as the planet raises in density, in resonance, there is more of an understanding of the bigger picture that starts to happen. The heart starts to open more. The wounded inner child starts to have room to heal more because it's in that fourth density where there is a unity that starts to form. So. That is also something that's important to know and another reason why I'm here sharing the message of the true understanding of demonic energy and angelic energy and why it's valuable for human evolution and why it was never evil. It was never bad. It was just two different polarities that work cohesively to create evolutionary potential. Okay, so with that being said, for those of you that are interested in having a deeper look on how some of this ritualistic, satanic symbolism manifests itself through everyday life, like the entertainment industry, I have a video that I pulled up from YouTube, and it comes from a, a series, a TV show series that I'm very into. And this series is called American Horror Story. I'm sure a lot of you know about it. So this is a new season. This is the newest season, I believe, of American Horror Story. It is season 12. And the entire intro of this series is extremely demonic. Like extremely demonic. There is so much ritualistic symbolism that is being kind of directly put right into your face. And I will help you understand it and I will help break it down for you as the listener and as the watcher of this video. So if you're listening through your headphones and you're not watching the screen, at this point, I would encourage you to watch the screen because I'm going to be doing a screen share here and we're going to be breaking down a little bit of this little intro so that you can understand how this ritualistic stuff gets pushed through the entertainment industry. Now, the average person is going to watch American Horror Story and they're going to think that this is just a creepy show and all this stuff is just creepy. But in reality, this is not just creepy. This is intentionally placed symbolism that actually has a significant effect energy-wise on the person who watches this. Who watches this. And everything that I said earlier about trauma and repressed negative energies 
It's designed to surface these things. It's designed to bring these things up. Now, they sprinkle in little things here and there that try to mislead you from your authentic self or mislead you from trusting nature. So I'll give you an example. I, I actually am watching this show uh, in my personal life. And there's a, there's a couple moments like in the show where literally, I mean, there's a lot of moments where this stuff happens. But one of the actors says, don't listen to your gut. <laughs> like after there's all this like crazy trauma that's unfolding, the, the actor goes, don't listen to your gut. Your gut's never right. <laughs> So it's like, why would they say that, right? Like, I think we all know listening to your gut is healthy because that's your intuition. So when they bombard you with all these symbols and then they hit you with, don't listen to your gut, that is very uh, misleading to the subconscious mind, right? It makes the viewer feel like uncomfortable and some people it will actually energetically affect them and it will cause them to not listen to their gut, <laughs> okay? So that was just an example, but we're going to do a screen share and we're going to break it down. So I will be right back. Okay, here we go. Okay, so first thing that I want to start with is notice all of the spinning. Notice the spinning, notice the spirals right? The counterclockwise spirals. Notice these things spiraling and spinning. Notice the red colors, right? We see this big red. Red is for the sphere of Gavura on the Kabbalistic tree or Golachab. This is the sphere of destruction. It is the sphere of war. It's the sphere of severity and violence, okay? So they're pushing this in to uh, the collective to create more room for anger, more room for violence, more room for warfare, right? That's what that largely does. Um, the spinning, spinning, energy moves in the Fibonacci sequence. Ener all energy moves in curves. It moves in spirals. So when you see the spinning, this is depending on which way, clockwise or counterclockwise, counterclockwise is the trauma spiral. It's the negative spiral, which means this spin helps to stimulate repressed negative energies within the system to then release them so that they can come to the surface. All right. So let's go ahead and go into it. Okay. So the woman is pregnant. This is giving birth. Okay, creating something is coming into being. And once again, we have the red colorway on her body. So we're birthing something that is going to be very fiery and something that's going to be very angry and violent and aggressive. When you see the spider webs, the spider and the spider webs can oftentimes be a symbol that represents the matrix that we live in. So everything operates in webs as well. So when it comes to our nervous systems, that's like a web. When you look at the energetic structure of nature, there's a web there. There's a matrix system that is webbed that exists throughout our planet. And this is also something that is worth understanding and worth knowing about because it is very real and it's something that's once again happening. So when you see the spider manifest with the spider web, that oftentimes can be a symbol of this matrix that we're living in. And they all they all they oftentimes use it in sort of like a sinister way, kind of like subtle symbols of saying, we control the planet, we control the matrix. All right. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you guys just noticed this, but check this out right here. So that is a Lucifer sigil that is sitting right in the background. And this cut screen happens so quickly. So we have this little dead baby. So death energy. Death represents energy that is tending to change. Energy moves from one state to a new state. 
So wherever there's death, there's always going to be rebirth. And then when there's a birth, there's going to be times or cycles where there's a necessity for death again. So what does this represent? This represents the death of the inner child. Okay. So we have the death of the inner child. That's one perspective that we could look at this. But we can also look at this from the perspective of, you know, the wounds of the inner child and the necessity for us to embrace death to be able to revisit these wounds that exist in our nervous system. And that would be the real Luciferian message that's behind this. So notice how, you know, these people, they use these occult symbols like the Lucifer sigil. And from their mind, they're operating more from the false self, dominate and control, et cetera. They think that this energy they're using with Lucifer is going to give them the power that they want and that they need to continue worshiping their false self. But in reality, the real Luciferian message is the light bearer. The real understanding and the real knowledge of the cosmic laws and how we're all here meant to find and evenly embrace the darkness and the light. So I'm this whole breakdown it is that I'm specifically doing now. This is the real Luciferian message and this is the real Luciferian perspective of what this energy of Lucifer brings to the collective because Lucifer is a very, very powerful extraterrestrial intelligence that exists as a source being in our galaxy, meaning this is like literally one of the highest resonating density intelligences within the entire galaxy that is responsible for orchestrating the matrix on this planet between positive and negative. So once again, the intentions of these people using this might be in a negative way, but the energy itself of Lucifer is always teaching us that everything happens for a reason and all things can be used as value and as lessons and as potential. So don't fear it. Don't run from it. Embrace it. Let it be what it is. Observe it. Let it go and process it. Okay? So that's what we see there. Let's keep it going. <laughs> So clearly, as you can see, there's a lot of symbolism of a wounded inner child that is showing up. Okay, that's worth taking note of. Um, why? Because this is programming that into the psyche of the viewers and the listeners. It's reflecting the wounded inner child, the hurt inner child. And in some ways, it's promoting it. Depends on the perspective. If you're unconscious of these things, it's easy to get influenced by this in a negative way. Whereas when you understand it, you can be with those wounds. You can let it further surface. Okay? It's all about perspective and it's all about how you're resonating with it. Spider, once again, connected to the web and the dark feminine, okay, that primordial feminine energy that dissolves things and ushers in the death energy. Notice lots of eye symbolism that's appearing. And that eye symbolism, once again, can be deeply connected to the all seeing eye, which is the eye of the, you know, hidden agenda watching over things. The eye of the observer, where energy um, projects itself largely from our eyes. Okay. So it's like, with all this dark symbolism and then the eye showing up, it's like manifesting the, the projection or the transfer and also showing signs of like, we're watching, okay? And it could also be a symbol of, do you see what's happening? Can you see the truth of these things between 
the corruption, between the craziness, all right? Okay. So let me go back. All right, so that right there, ladies and gentlemen, was a little bit of an example of how these things manifest themselves through the entertainment industry. This is just one example. There are many other ways that this comes through in a much more subtle way. Okay, this is clearly American Horror Story, so they can really get crazy with it. But in other shows, like things that you would never imagine or guess, like kid TV shows, they will put this type of symbolism in and this type of stuff in to once again bring through these darker energies and sometimes incorporate aspects that are meant to hurt the person that's observing it and watching it. But once again, the bigger reason why this is happening is because it is through this industry, the entertainment industry, and these types of people where the today's matrix has been established. So if it wasn't for these people and these groups and this collective agenda, we wouldn't have a matrix the way that we do on our planet, which is actually important and it's very valuable. And we don't want to destroy it. We don't need to destroy it. We don't have to fight against it. We don't want to resist it. We want to let it be what it is and let it naturally dissolve and dissipate as we as a collective are starting to shift into a new density of consciousness. So we are starting to move into a new density as a collective consciousness. So a lot of these false self worshipers and these agendas are naturally going to dissolve and change in different ways. They're not going to be gone. They're going to still exist, but they're going to shift and change pretty drastically in a different way than how they have been operating. And that is important to understand. So with that being said, hopefully you can have a clearer understanding of what's taking place and why these energies manifest themselves. Like where are those people that are using these energies? Where are they actually coming from on an internal level? Remember, they are wounded people. And everything that they're doing when it comes to this symbolism and when it comes to how they push this stuff, it is actually karmic. What they do to you is what they're doing to them. And they don't know this. They get so deeply involved in this stuff and they're so wounded that they will push the limit. They will hurt innocent children. They will hurt innocent people. They will go as far as sacrifice and ritualistic torture. And they don't know that they're actually doing that to themselves and they are going to karmically pay that price. They will try to create scapegoats and what I like to call good shepherds as people to try to offset the karma that they have to face. So these people think that they're wise. They think they have knowledge, but they're only as wise as they're willing to go into their own darkness and be with themselves. So they spend a lot of time hurting others, potentially sacrificing others, whether that's physical or energetic. And then they'll spend a lot of time, uh, you know, trying to have scapegoats, right? People that they can dump their karma onto, people that, that they can continuously project on so that they don't have to face what it is that they need to face within themselves to its deepest core. But at some point within the growth process, they're absolutely going to run out of scapegoats. They're going to run out of the option and the ability to utilize other people to offshoot their own karma. And it will come back and get them. Look at people like Diddy, Jay-Z, Beyonce, right? These are people that were collectively known to be involved with Illuminati types of things, things that were probably very inappropriate behind scenes, potentially child trafficking, right? Look at Drake. Drake is getting pushed out by Kendrick Lamar talking about pedophilia, right? It's like the karma comes full circle every time. 
And I also want you to know this. I know that from personal experience. I've gone so deep into my ritualistic practices and working with these darker energies. And, you know, I've, I come from a background of severe narcissistic abuse that through my process, at one point, I became that person. I was that quote unquote evil person that did not have the best intentions for everyone. And I did have a wounded inner child. And I was doing things ritualistically that were very destructive. I've, let's just put it this way I've hurt a lot of people through ritual. Now, where I was at the time, I thought what I was doing was right. I thought I was right. I thought that's what was authentic at the time, but it wasn't. And I paid the energetic price. I had to work through that karma in this lifetime. So I know firsthand what it's like to be that person that's operating in that satanic agenda, literally. I mean, at my worst, I was viewing other people's pain as power. And it's not that I was evil. It's not that my intentions were all unpure, but I was creating belief systems to try to justify other people's pain as turning into my power. And that is not appropriate. And that's not authentic to myself as I now have a healed inner child that I exist with, that I live with, and that I've spent a lot of time going into. And I have had to pay that energetic price of those behaviors that I did. And it taught me very quickly that this is not how this stuff works. It's a paradigm. It's a resonance scale for where a lot of people will sit worshiping the false self, but they don't know they're getting played. And the demonic energies that are behind them, they know the bigger picture. That's why you want to really go through the process and you want to be willing to heal so that you can be more so in resonance with the higher densities of consciousness, the sources of these extraterrestrial intelligences so that you can actually understand what's happening and live a life where you're truly powerful, where you're actually authentic to who you are, where you feel satisfied at a deeper soul level and you're not having to do all these things to try to create safety. Rather, you can just know you're safe and be safe and resonate at that level. Okay. So once again, hopefully as I broke this down, this can give you a much deeper understanding and a much deeper look into some of these ritualistic satanic agendas that are manifesting on our planet today and how you can better accept them for where they're at and work with them in a healthy way and watch them slowly dissolve and change as time goes on. Okay. So with that being said, this is where we're going to wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to hear me speak more on these subjects, hit the thumbs up button. That lets me know. Hit the thumbs up. Do not forget. If you're watching this, hit that thumbs up button if you're getting value from this. Drop down in the comment section and let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your perspective is. I want to hear it. And I want to know what you think about this stuff. I want to hear if you resonate with it too. So drop down in the comment section. I would love to read over those comments. Hit the notification bell and get notified whenever I'm posting because I post as often as I can and you absolutely don't want to be missing out. So get notified. Now also subscribe to my channel because by subscribing, you are going to be further linking into the content at an energetic level. There's a psychic component that goes behind that. So if you want to further connect with everything it is that I'm doing and that I'm teaching, subscribe to the channel. All right. Now, if there is someone that you know that will gain value from this, I encourage you deeply to share this video with them. Copy and paste the link and share it to that person. If you know someone that's struggling with understanding what's going on in the world today and it's causing a lot of stress on them, send it to that person. Do them a favor, okay? And also, if you have a social media platform that you would like to post this on, I also encourage you to share it there too. That could also be valuable, all right? 
Now, with that being said, I'm going to take your awareness to literally now the most important link within the entire YouTube description itself. And this is the first link at the very top. You cannot miss it. This is going to take you to my Patreon. Now, on my Patreon, I have over 260 plus videos that I put a lot of time and energy into creating that is only for the Patreon members. It is completely exclusive. So if you want to take advantage of it, get over to the Patreon now, okay? I have a cult education similar to what we just talked about today, ritualistic practices that I perform and that I teach you how to do, education on Kabbalistic initiation, regulating your nervous system, creating a healthy foundation for yourself to heal trauma in an effective way. All of these things are on the Patreon, organized very clearly and precisely in collection sections. So definitely look into it if that's something that you're interested in, okay? Tier number three and four of the Patreon is going to be extremely unique. This is a ritualistic service that I perform and I offer for my entire collective consciousness. And this is the only ritualistic service that it is that I do. This is what's called the Universe B Vampire Ritual Service. And this is a very unique ritual, and it's not meant for everyone. This is meant for people that are willing to do the deeper work, are willing to embrace their shadow and the unconscious aspects of themselves, and then become one with the shadow and turn it into their potential. This is for people that are in resonance with some of these darker energies that exist in our solar system and in our universe. So if that's you, then this is absolutely something that is for you. But once again, this is a ritual service that is an energetic transfer from me to you. So all the different experiences and initiations that I've been through throughout my life, it's carried in my energy field. And I can transfer that from me to you as the participant to support you through your process working with some of these darker energies working with the negative polarity and going into your deep unconscious and healing at that very deep level so that you can turn it into your own potential and evolutionary power. I cause some significant changes to the energy body when it comes to spins and I spin it counterclockwise, which allows you to have a very significant magnetic pull and it surfaces once again these repressed negative energies so that you can work with them and accept them and then integrate them. And it gets you to the point where you can start pulling in dark matter energy and chaos from the environment around you and turn it into your own power and evolutionary potential. Okay. You can get to the point where you can pull someone's false self out of them, integrate it into your own potential. And then leave that person in a position where they now have to actually face themselves and their repressed emotions come to the surface. And the more refined you get with this, you can start guiding people on how to align with their authentic self and show them how to find acceptance for those emotions that you're bringing out of them. So it becomes a win win situation. All right. You are also getting access to what is called an Atlantean crystal grid. This is a specific crystal grid that is advanced that I've created that has a torsion field that sits in the center of it projecting frequencies that I play. Every single person that signs up for the Patreon tier three or four gets entered into this crystal grid at a deep intimate level with pictures and other information. It is consistently giving a streamline to those individuals, to those participants that are inside of the grid. All right. So this is like a high level technology that a lot of people don't understand and don't know about, but it really is like a crystal matrix that you enter into that is specifically designed to support every aspect of your development process. And I've created it myself for that purpose. Okay. And I have some very valuable tools of my own that sit in the grid as well to keep me connected to it as well. So if you're interested in any of this, definitely consider it. It is the first link 
in the YouTube description. You can't miss it. I'm going to leave that there. Okay. Second link below is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. If you want to get to know me, if you're interested in what I talk about, if you have questions that you would like to ask, or you can book a mentorship with me. This is a six week mentorship or a three month mentorship. That's the most popular. This is the most powerful and intimate way to work with me. I'm going to get to know you on a personal level and we're going to have room to be able to go into your repressed emotions specifically, start working through some of those memories and those traumas. And we're also going to be working on creating a healthy foundation for you throughout this whole process that will allow you to better integrate and work with these different feelings and these different emotions and these traumas. And what this will do in the long run is it will start to regulate your nervous system. And once that's in place, then we can start approaching the initiatory process when it comes to Kabbalah initiation, if that's something you're interested in. So right now I'm doing a whole bunch of mentorships. My entire schedule is full at the moment. But if you book, I can find ways to fit you in. Okay, so definitely check that out if that is something that you resonate with. We'll leave it there. Now, in the same second link below, you have an option to book a tarot card reading with Alexia. She is a very gifted tarot card reader that can tell you exactly what's going on within an internal level, like within your state and what you need to know about it to help you better understand what it is that you're supposed to be doing in regards to your development process. Then she can tell you what's going to be taking place and what's going to be shifting in your near future to give you some deeper insight into how these shifts are going to be manifesting so that you can better align with them. Now, she also is aware of Kabbalah, so she's going to be connecting this back to the Kabbalistic tree to help you better understand what it is that you're experiencing too. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely consider it. That is also going to be at that second link below. Okay. Third link below is the Lucifer's Foundation course. This is a course that gives you step by step instructions and structure with 11 modules that you'll have access to for the rest of your life on how to build a powerful yet healthy relationship with Lucifer. Okay. Tons of people have purchased it. There's been tons of valuable feedback. If this is something that you're interested in, I would highly encourage you to look into this course. It addresses everything that matters. All right, we'll leave it there. Fourth link, this is the YouTube memberships. As a YouTube member, you are joining into the Universal Mastery family, the Universal Mastery community. And I would absolutely love to have you a part of the family. Okay. So that like literally that makes my heart happy to see people joining in that. All right. So if that's something that you want to take advantage of, definitely look into it. It's the fourth link below. Now in the fifth link, this is my book recommendations for you. If you are looking for some books to study, I highly recommend you look into that fifth link below. This is going to give you literally the fundamentals of occult knowledge that you need as tools that you can strap onto your tool belt that you can use whenever you need it. I this, These are the books that I go to now, and I have the physical copies. You can also purchase your physical copies on Amazon, which reminds me I need to make a whole YouTube video discussing that so that people can know this. Um, but if you search the book's on Amazon, you can also find them there too. But they're very powerful, very valuable. If you're looking for books to study, you can purchase the four ebook bundle right now and have immediate access, permanent access. All right. So definitely consider it. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you on the next video. Peace.